On this awesome episode of UTR, we're back in the UP with more cool stuff for you to see and do. We'll chow at a Steinhaus you'll wish was your house, embark on the Ebon Ice Caves, and show you a snowmobiler's paradise. We'll even snowshoe the trails at Tequamanon. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan's UP a great winter place to be. Thousands of years ago, glaciers carved out two mighty peninsulas. Ever since then, winter has always been more than just a season. That's why we invented the snowboard, became the birthplace of organized skiing, patented the first modern snowmobile, and groomed thousands of miles of winter trails every season. Because when you're crafted from winter, this is what you do. This season, let's winter in pure Michigan. There's something special about the pride, the skill, and the passion it takes to build something great. The Construction Association of Michigan, CAM, understands that passion and has been providing contractors with the resources they need since 1885. A visit to the Stahls Automotive Museum will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. In addition to beautiful cars, enjoy the collection of gas pumps, road signs, oil cans, and other car-related accessories. Info at stallsauto.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. You know, for almost a decade now, I've been telling you guys how incredibly cool the UP is. And if you haven't been up here by now, you're on your own. I'm done. Finito. Okay, look, one more time. You've got to get up here. The food scene's incredible. The people are great. The natural beauty is unbelievable. So that's it. Last time. Get up here right now. Okay, look. How'd I do? All right. <laughs> well, before I go off the deep end, I think it's safe to say that the UP is definitely worth your time. Like I always say, it's our own out west, and there's a whole world of natural and man-made wonders up here to explore. So once again, the fellers and I headed north over the mighty Mackinac Bridge for yet another patented UTR UP adventure. Only this time, we're hitting it when the days are short, your socks are long, and the white stuff is everywhere. And speaking of where, Michigan's incredible Upper Peninsula is located, oh, this is silly, just head north, you'll find it. Yep, it's winter in the UP all right. The temps were forecast for 20 below, and we drove through a blizzard of epic proportions. They were shutting down roads as fast as we could find them, but the snow wasn't about to stop us. And as you can see, they got a ton of it. Besides, this was an adventure. Oh, well, that and the fact that there was a mess of good food waiting for us at the end of the drive. We do have our priorities. We were up in Marquette a while back. We were really hungry, so we happened into this place for a bite to eat, and the food was so good, we quickly decided to feature them on the show. <laughs> that was five years ago. Not too quick, but better late than never. Yeah, it took us a while, but boy, was it worth it because here at the Steinhaus, every dish is authentically German and prepared with a creative flair foodies are pretty fond of. Justin Fairbanks and Dave Cappert are two confessed food aficionados who decided to do what they do best right here at home. And the folks in Marquette are mighty happy about it. Is it safe to assume that you guys are lifelong culinary cohorts? <laughs> <laughs> or just buddies. I would say so. You know, we've known each other for over 10 years and just buddies first. Um, but kind of the genesis of the restaurant coming together was just us making dinners and hanging out together, you know, and being involved in the industry separately. So. And Dave, you're a local boy. You are actually an official mixologist. I wouldn't go that far, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I originally went to Northern. That's where we met. I took a singular bartending class there, but it was more about, you know, at that point I was nervous about how to make a Shirley Temple. I didn't, I didn't know <laughs> anything. And then 
from there, I got a job here in town and then left after school and spent a year abroad in Australia working over there. And that's where I kind of started to hone the craft a little bit, reading a lot, testing out recipes. We had stayed in touch throughout the years from then, me coming back here and stuff like that. We'd always kind of had the, you know, vision of starting something. I never thought it would come to fruition, but here we are, you know, six <laughs> years later. We didn't think our TV show would either, and it just, we keep trying to mess it up, but it just keeps going and going and going. That's what we're doing. Yeah, we know all about <laughs> messing it up. <laughs> well, now you guys, this is authentic German, only it's kind of like a foodie twist to it? Yep, we, you know, German is the cornerstone of the cuisine, the ingredients, the techniques, and things like that. And then we give it a little bit of a twist uh, with, you know, the type of ingredients that we use or a little tweak to this dish or that dish. It's mostly traditional, but, you know, we're in the United States. If we want to put bacon in our sour rotten, that's what we're going to do, so. <laughs> well, bacon makes everything better. Yeah. Truth. Well, true story. I mean, Jim and I really stumbled in here five years ago, and you guys must have just opened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sat down and had your simple house salad, and we both looked up at each other and said, this is one of the best house salads I've ever had. Then the food got better and better and better, and sorry it took us five years to come back. Okay. <laughs> You're here now. Never. Yeah. <laughs> well, the atmosphere that you guys have created here is it's the kind of place I love. It's, it's small enough so it feels intimate, and it's like that great little neighborhood bar and restaurant where you can go and everybody kind of knows you and the food's great and it's a place to connect and share and eat and drink. So yeah, what you guys have done is great. Yeah, that was kind of the, at the start, we're like, let's make a spot that our buddies will come to and you know, <laughs> everybody can come eat sausage and drink beer and we got a lot bigger response than we anticipated from the local community as far as interest in what we were doing. And so it just kind of spitballed from there. And Well, no, you guys can go. You guys are talented young guys. You can go anywhere and do this because you're doing it really well. Why do you stay in Marquette? We love it here. Yeah. It's tough to leave the UP if, if you've been here forever. And you guys, like I think I heard somebody say, you guys, you love food, you love drink, you love where you live. Mm-hmm. Bingo. Yeah. It all comes together. Well, here's to doing things right. Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers. Everything we sampled that night was savory and sensational, and their popular potent potables helped put a smile on all of our full and happy faces. And speaking of happy faces, hi. Hi. Um, do you speak any German? I do not, no. Do you eat German? Well, of course, I'm here. Love the atmosphere. Let me hear you say it in German. I love the atmosphere. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you, um, do you have any German food in your teeth? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. No, no, real seriously, what do you love about this place? Best brunch, yeah. great dinner, one of the best places in town. So I understand not, not only do you love our program, but your grandparents do as well? They do, they do. Would you like to say hello to them? So hi, Nana, hi, Papa. Is that German? Uh, no, that's not. Oh. <laughs> so if casual fine dining with a German flair is for you, Stroll into the Stein House in downtown Marquette. I guarantee it won't take you five years to come back. Mmm, schnitzel. For the next leg of our awesome UP winter adventure, we headed about 45 minutes southeast of Marquette to the tiny town of Eben Junction. It's here where you'll find a trailhead that takes you about a mile and a half back to the world famous Eben Ice Caves. People from all over the world make this trip to witness one of the most finest frozen phenomenon you'll find in Michigan. Now, since we're hiking deep into the Hiawatha National Forest, I thought it'd be a good idea to have a guide with us today. And look who I got, Tasha Steelstra. Well, you may remember Tasha from such TV shows as Under the Radar, episode 808. She and her husband, Ed, own and operate Nature's Kennel, where they took us on an absolutely incredible dog sled ride across the frozen tundra. Well, it turns out she also occasionally conducts tours of the Eben Ice Caves. <laughs> what are the chances? First of all, thank you, Tasha, for joining us today and, and putting aside your dog sledding duties. <laughs> um, why is it every time we get together, it's below zero outside? It does seem to be that way. Yeah. It, we shouldn't keep doing that. Yeah. Thanks for bringing your assistant, Nate. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Nate. You'll come in handy, I'm sure. Our equipment is heavy. Um, so now this little parking area that we found, and it's, it's in the town of 
Eben Junction, right? Yes. Okay, this is private property? This is private property. So this first section of field here that we walk through is private property. The ice caves are accessible to the public because the landowner has not gated something and put up no trespassing signs and allows the public every day of the winter to walk across and get into the Hiawatha National Forest. People coming in here should be prepared, correct? You can't just come in here in your tennis shoes and walk in because it's quite a ways. Yeah, it's about a mile round trip, but I find it's a hard mile. Yeah. And you'll see as we go, it's kind of up and down and you need to be able to be pretty mobile through deep snow. Right. Uh, and, you know, we have our little ice grippers on our feet here and you don't need snowshoes. You know, you definitely don't want to go in on skis because right. the trail's going to get pretty narrow, but you do need something on your feet for, it'll get slippery as we go. Gotcha, so thanks for bringing these. You're welcome. So shall we start the trek? We should go. Well, since we had all of our gear and Tasha was here, we shed our fear and hit the trail. Now Matt had the foresight to bring a sled, which at first I thought was for me, but turns out it was for the equipment. And young Nate made sure I pulled my fair share. Oh. Now, even with the two feet of fresh snow from the blizzard, the trek across the field wasn't too far or too bad. And the first part of the walk through the woods was even a thick piece of snowy cake. But then things got a bit more challenging and a ton more beautiful. This truly was an unbelievable winter wonderland. Heck, the white stuff was so deep, parts of the trail even turned into snowy slides. There's a lot of up and down on the trail, but this kind of down, I can do. This will be easy. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Oh, oh. Ah, see? And then, just as we thought we might have taken a wrong turn, it happened. Look, the ice caves. Dun, dun, dun. There they were, tucked away in a little canyon where only hardy adventure seekers could find them. And when you first set eyes on them, suddenly, the whole arduous endeavor becomes totally worth it. I'll be honest, that was a healthy hike in here. It's I mean, a challenging hike. Yeah, I... I mean, especially the end, a lot of ups and downs. But when you come upon this, it's breathtaking. It's a kind of a gift at the end of the workout. Yeah, yeah. To yeah totally. It's like, <laughs> it's like you're going, oh, I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe this. the equipment's heavy. And oh my gosh, look. It's just, and this is not a waterfall. No, so this is a sandstone outcropping. You can see the sandstone above us. Yeah. So sandstone is fairly porous. So it's just a seepage dripping through the sandstone cliffs. And it happens every winter. It happens every winter. Amazing. And this is the Rock River Valley, and there's more formations like this through the valley. This is the largest one, but there's some a pretty good size as well as you creep up the valley and explore on each and side. And this lasts how long throughout the winter? Until it's... Uh, I've been here in, in late March, and it's still pretty good. It'll start to get I mean, just dripping more and, and wet. You know, if we get a big thaw, and you have to be careful when these do, sheets do melt at some point. So and this fall. comes off crashing down, and they do fall. I doubt that'll happen today since it's oh, 11 billion degrees today. below zero. Yes, yes. <laughs> like I said, the, the trek in here was harder than I thought. Yeah. But when you see this, it is so absolutely worth it. It's just, you ever get tired of seeing it? No, and it changed, you know, the neat thing I find about places like this in the winter, it changes every time. I was here about three weeks ago and it was much more open. So we call these curtains, the curtains of ice. Yeah. Um, and there wasn't nearly this curtain coverage that there is now, it was, it was a lot more. It just changes every time, yeah. Well, that was the time when you sent for one of your dog sleds, right, to take us back? <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'd like coming down that trail. <laughs> no, no, they wouldn't, I wouldn't. Yeah, if you're gonna come back here, make sure you're, uh... You do a couple of squat thrusts before you get in here. Yeah, and you're walking through deep snow at, you know, I'll walk along the beach a bunch if you need to get some sand workout or something, because it is, it, 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 and you know, you're in here, there's no cell coverage, there's no cell service. So if you do have problems, you're at the, the liberty of other hikers helping you get out, which I've helped a few people out before. You may be helping, you may be helping <laughs> us out. <laughs> the day is still young, right? <laughs> this was an awesome experience, and we had the entire place to ourselves. So we took our time, had some fun, explored the caves, and soaked in all of the beauty and serenity. In the meantime, Nate turned the whole place into his own personal snow park. He had an absolute blast exploring, slipping, and sliding. And speaking of slipping and sliding, without our ice cleats, I don't think I would have even attempted this trip. 
Actually, to be honest, if you're not sure-footed or in relatively good shape, you should probably let us do the hiking for you and see the caves right here on your trusty UTR. But just remember, if you do plan to make the hike in, be careful and be respectful. That way, the folks who own the surrounding land will keep letting all of us in to enjoy these cool caves. Did I say cool? I meant cold. This is Tom Dalton signing off from the Evan Ice Caves. <laughs> whoa, whoa, mommy! Now the next morning, it was a balmy 18 degrees below zero. So we decided, what the heck? Let's head on up to Big Bay. Now Big Bay is a little town about 45 minutes northwest of Marquette at the end of County Road 550. And it's there where we joined up with a couple of guys who really know how to have fun with UP Winters. That's right, I'm talking about snowmobiling. And if you ain't done it like I done it, you ain't lived. <laughs> is this the part where I just take off? Okay, well then which one of these knobs makes it go forward? Well, I never claim to be an expert at it. Actually, I've never even done it before. But I do know one thing, it sure looks like a whole heck of a lot of fun. And to make sure I have exactly that, we started things off at Cram's General Store. This is where you go in these here parts when you need whatever it is you need. So after a quick lesson in how the heck does this thing work, we suited up and got ready to ride with the Big Bay 550 Snowmobile Club. And with the engines a-roaring, we headed out for a wild and windy ride on some of the most beautiful snowmobile trails imaginable. I'm telling you, we were flying, and I was, well, trying to keep up. Well, after about a half hour of pure Michigan forward motion, we decided to stop so the man Joe Cram could tell me how I was doing. First of all, Joe, this is more fun than should be allowed by law. <laughs> I missed my first time, and not only is the scenery incredible, but oh my gosh, this is more fun than my mini bike when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah it's fun to, fun to ride out here, yeah. it is. Now the name of your snowmobile club is the Big Bay 550 Club, right? Snowmobile Club, yeah. Right, and you're in Big Bay, and you're off County Road 550. Is that a coincidence? Yeah, that's why we named it. I figured. <laughs> when I pictured snowmobiling, I thought it was just, you know, flat trails through the woods and stuff, but this is like a roller coaster ride up yeah. here. It's challenging, it's fun, and it's just, it's breathtaking. Yeah, it's a beautiful trail to ride. You know, and, and we get a lot of people that just want to look at the view, and they love the trail, but, uh, you know, but in some places it's crooked, other places you can let it out a little bit, you know. Well, the nice thing about the UP is you always get the snow you need up here. Well, we didn't think about it this year. We're a little late getting it. Yeah, but boy, what did we get it. Yeah. <laughs> this trip, we got it. <laughs> now, what I noticed as soon as we took off is how beautifully groomed and maintained these hundreds of miles of trails are. Who does that? Our club, our club does it. We're a grooming club. We're not, a lot of places you go to, they got social and grooming, right. okay? And some of them are just social clubs, but ours is strictly a grooming club. Well, thank goodness for guys like you that maintain the trails because it just makes it so, talk about a smooth ride. I wasn't sure what to expect. I thought I was gonna be bumping through the forest and hitting squirrels and trees. And yeah. it's just, it's such a wonderful ride. Yeah. You think I got what it takes to be a serious sledder? You're doing a heck of a job. You're doing a heck of a job. Really? Yeah. Not just because I get hey, you haven't 20. hit anything yet. We're, we're, we've been out 45 minutes. You haven't hit anything yet. And uh, well, yeah. we haven't got stuck yet. I so, got that going for me. Yeah, but we're gonna go for a little spot up here and look north, and uh, we're gonna see how good you are in the deep snow. Because we only gotta go about maybe a quarter of a mile on the deep stuff, so we'll see what you got. Sounds like a challenge to yeah. me. Yeah. And if it gets stuck, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks. <laughs> well, once I started figuring out the ins and outs, overs and unders, and how do you go forwards of snowmobiling, believe it or not, I actually got pretty good at it. The forest trails are incredibly beautiful and pristine up here and the views along the way take your breath away. Well, the temperatures could have had something to do with that too. Joe and his buddy Bruce were really great guys, and after spending the afternoon with them, I totally got what's so special about this sport. It's incredibly fun, and you can do it with friends or family, and it's something you can do your whole life. If adventure is what you seek, my friend, make plans to do some snowmobiling in the UP. It don't get no better than this. Warmer, yes. Better, no. The next morning, we headed about two and a half hours east 
to a place in the UP we'd been to in the summer, but never under these beautiful and snowy conditions. And this last leg of our adventure would put us back on our feet again, but this time with a little help from an old friend that's been helping people walk in the snow for over a hundred years now. And speaking of old friends, we found another one. Here we go again. Now, you may remember Teresa Neal from such TV shows as Under the Radar, episode 506. She was the awesome park ranger at Tequamadon Falls State Park who showed us all of the wild, watery wonders they have here. Well, as luck would have it, there's something else they have here at the park. In the winter, they conduct guided snowshoe hikes. And Teresa is our official guide. So this is like old home week on UTR, because first we, we saw Tasha mm -hmm. again, and now you. Yes, so, and if welcome back. Think, remember, we were here in the summertime, and you were so wonderful. You actually rowed us, I think, in a boat over to the Lower Falls. I did row you in a boat. Which yes. was, thank you very much. One and done, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But it was a one, such a wonderful experience, I actually brought my family back oh, the good. next summer. So, But now we're here in the winter, obviously, to yes. snowshoe. What is the experience like? Is it free? How does this work? Sure, so every Saturday in February, we get out as many snowshoes as possible. Yep. And people come from all over the state and all over the Midwest to borrow snowshoes for free. They can take a hike on their own or they can go on our guided hike at two o'clock. And then oftentimes people stick around to do a one mile lantern lit trail. Yeah, we were gonna do the nighttime one, but the cameras don't work too well at night. So That's we thought true. this might be easier. That's true. So these snowshoes look a little different than the ones I've seen in the movies. Sure, So the, yeah. obviously they've progressed. There are many different types of snowshoes anymore. Um, so we have our traditional wood frame snowshoes, which are more the original style that you might think of in the movies, yeah. the ones that hang on the wall and are really pretty. You see at restaurants. And <laughs> but they're super nice in this fluffy stuff we have right now. So they're really good at blazing a trail. They're nice and quiet in the snow. And they're pretty. You can hang them up in the summertime. Yeah. yeah. You can also um, strain spaghetti with them. You could string spaghetti with them. Or if play tennis. That too, that too. Yeah, because we've gotten in the past couple of days like two feet of snow. Yes. So this is the conditions are perfect. The weather's actually warmed up. It's went from a balmy 17 below to I think today is like 21 or something, which 20, really helps. Yeah. But this is also an educational experience. It you... is, yeah. So the guided snowshoe hike, uh, we talk about winter survival, right. about winter at the park. Well, speaking of the park, the trail system here is more than just around the falls. It's gigantic, isn't it? It is, yeah. The winter, um, we have a few different trails. So we keep some trails groomed just for snowshoeing. We keep some groomed just for skiing. But people can explore anywhere in the park in the wintertime. Uh, it's not too strenuous of a hike, is it? Um, no, it'll be OK. OK. I geared it down for you. Oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks. What is it, it's 55 minutes instead of an hour? Thanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it was almost time to take off into the snowy tundra. So as Teresa did her pre-trek talk, I geared up and got ready for adventure. <laughs> this wintry hike really is a blast and you learn so much about the forest along the way. Not to mention the fact that you get some much needed winter exercise and make a ton of new friends. As we hiked between the trees, Teresa told wonderful stories, imparted fascinating facts, and believe it or not, these snowshoes really do keep you about five feet above the forest floor. But the coolest part of the whole experience is at the very end of the hike when suddenly the winter majesty of Dequamadon's upper falls appears right before your eyes. Now I'd seen the falls in the summer, but never like this. And thanks to Matt's gratuitous drone footage, you get to see the falls like the birds do, from high above and all around. Seeing the falls like this kind of makes you want to grow wings. But even on the ground, Tequamanon is absolutely awesome. What a great end to a fun and wonderful hike. If you're looking for a fun and unique UP winter adventure, give the guided snowshoe hikes at Tequamanon Falls State Park a try. And if cabin fever has your family in the doldrums, do what we do on UTR. Hop in the car, head for the UP, and hit the trails. Oh, and don't forget about the food. You know us, we likes to eat. Mmm, more schnitzel. Some say winter is a silent season. Somehow in Michigan, winter silence speaks loud. This season, It's winter. <laughs> it's 
in Pure, Michigan. There's something special about the pride, the skill, and the passion it takes to build something great. The Construction Association of Michigan, CAM, understands that passion and has been providing contractors with the resources they need since 1885. A visit to the Stahls Automotive Museum will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. In addition to beautiful cars, enjoy the collection of gas pumps, road signs, oil cans, and other car-related accessories. Info at StahlsAuto.com. 